Understanding your ball motion is one of the most important factors in raising your average. It's probably more important than your physical game in some situations. However, the biggest issue with ball motion is that most people, they don't understand it. There's a really big misconception amongst bowlers that having a sound physical game and the newest ball is all you need to strike. Here's the thing, it doesn't matter how strong your ball is or how well you can repeat shots if you're using the wrong ball in the wrong situation. It's an issue I'm often asked about and most people don't quite grasp. So I figured why not dive into the basics of reading what your ball is telling you. Guys, for more content like this and live bowling action, consider subscribing to our channel. One of the most common tells that your look is deteriorating is the flat tent. The flat tent is up there as one of the more disappointing leaves in my book. However, it can tell us a lot about what is happening to the lane pattern that we cannot see. If you've ever heard a pro or coach tell you to post your shot and watch the ball through the pins, this is why. In an age where strike percentage reigns supreme, taking a shot off can be extremely costly. So with that out of the way, let's take a look and watch what happens when we throw this shot. So let's take a look at what you just saw. In this clip, I'm using a Storm Phase 2. The ball is crossing the 18th board at the arrows and getting to the 6th board at the breakpoint. These factors are important to know when we compare them to where we are aiming and what our ball is doing. The ball makes contact with the head pin on the 16th board and exits the pin deck on the 12th board. Would the naked eye be able to see that? Probably not on the first try, but after watching situations like this over and over again, your eye will be trained to watch where the ball is and what that tells. The key thing we need to see here is the six pin going straight to the right into the ditch. Normally, the six pin would take out the pen pen either by kicking off the sidewall or going straight back into the 10 pin. In this case, it went straight right into the ditch. So now we understand what to look for as the ball is going down lane. Now, what do we do with this information? Well, that's the key. Here's a couple things to know. First, the ball contacting the head pin on the 16th board is about a board too far to the right. Next, the ball exiting the pin deck on the 12th board is significantly too far right. We should be seeing the ball continue through the pins much more than deflecting to the 12th board as it exits the pin deck. So why did this happen? In my instance, and for most of us, there's two main reasons. First, is that phase two is a strong, solid, sanded, symmetrical ball. This makes the ball hook early in the mid lane and be smooth and controllable down lane. This causes the ball to use its energy a little too quickly and not have enough energy down lane as the pattern breaks down. Most of us are probably gonna run into this situation when we leave the flat tent, so it's important to recognize which ball we're using and what it just did down lane. The first thing you need to do when you flat tent is confirm that you've thrown a good ball. If we know we've thrown a good ball, then we can attribute the results to our ball and how it's motioning down lane. If you did throw a good ball, then at that point, we need to be changing balls. Some other things that we could try that I don't necessarily suggest if we did in fact throw a good ball is potentially moving further left. If we were to move further right, this ball is going to hook even earlier and go high on the head pin instead of being in an area around the 17th board. If we move left, the ball is still going to be hooking a little bit too early and being too smooth down lane, having even less energy when it hits the head pin than it did on the previous shot. This is going to cause us to either flat 10 again or worse, potentially leave a split like the 210. So what do we do then? Well, ultimately we need a ball that's gonna have more energy when it hits the head pin. The best way to get our ball to use its energy later down on the lane is to change the cover stock from a sanded solid to a polished hybrid or pearl. In this instance, I ball down to a phase three, which is a polished hybrid. I like the motion down lane that I'm getting out of the core, but I just need it to hook a tiny bit earlier and be more continuous through the pins. With that said, Let's take a look at this clip and see what happens. A few things we want to note before diving into this ball. First, you can see the ball's break point was further down lane, and second, the reaction happened much quicker when the ball started hooking. With that, let's see why. The ball crosses the 17th board at the arrows, which is just a board right of the first ball. The ball then gets to the fourth board at the break point. 
I know this ball will be more responsive and hook right to left more than the first ball, so to make sure this ball still hits pocket, I don't move my feet, but my launch angle gets steeper, hence why the ball crosses the arrow board for the right and is two boards for the right at the break point. The ball then contacts the head pin on the 17th board, which we learn is the correct position. Lastly, the ball exits the pin deck on the 22nd board, 10 boards further left than phase two. Let's watch this clip one more time and really appreciate what a ball should look like as it goes through the pins. Although these balls were very close to each other as they went down the lane, there was a stark difference on how they continued through the pins and exited the pin deck. Of course, you're going to need a tight physical game and a well-rounded arsenal to score well. But if you can't read what your ball is telling you as it's going down the lane, it won't matter how many balls you have or how many times you can repeat a shot. There's three things that I hope we learn today. One, we need to be watching our ball go down lane and through the pin. Two, we need to understand what our ball is telling us. And three, we need to understand how to change balls in order to change our ball motion to get the corner pin out. Folks, I hope we all learned something. And tell me down in the comments, what do you do when you leave a flat tent? Are you going to change your game plan after this video? Or are you gonna to stick to what you've been doing? What other ball reaction issues do you run into? These are all things that we'd love to answer here at Championship Bowling. As always, like this video and subscribe to our channel for more tutorials like this and live bowling action. My name's Chayton Peterson, president of Championship Bowling, and we will see you all later.